For nearly 20 years, the Volvo S60 has been a solid Swedish alternative to its German competitors in the compact luxury sports sedan segment. In fact, if you guys are familiar with the Volvo brand, you'll know that they've been on a relentless mission to completely overhaul their products. It started all with the Volvo XC90 back in 2016, where it debuted the scalable product architecture. That's their all new platform. And as you guys know, the S60 was the last vehicle in their portfolio to get this new architecture. So in today's video, I've got the 2019 Volvo S60 T6 R design. As you can see, it's got the styling from the bigger brother S90. It's got a completely redesigned interior that will wow you, especially if you guys are coming from a German car. And it also has all the Swedish flair that we come to expect from the Volvo as a brand. So in today's video, I'm gonna go over all the reasons why you should buy a Volvo S60 over its German competitors. So in the compact luxury sports sedan segment, design is a really important aspect for a lot of buyers. And this is where Volvo pretty much has it made with the styling of the S60. As you can see, compared to the stale German competitors, the Volvo is just utterly beautiful. Even in the R design trim, it looks beautiful yet aggressive at the same time. I love what Volvo is doing with their headlight technology. This is their signature Thor's hammer uh, full LED headlights. You can see the LED resembles basically Thor's hammer. It's got an LED turn signal, an LED daytime running light. You have LED low and high beams, and then you have LED fog lights at the lower fascia. And this fuchsia red exterior color with the black accents, it is just gorgeous. I, would, I wouldn't hesitate to call this car the most beautiful car in the compact luxury sports sedan segment. And Volvo really did uh, everything they could with the styling, and it really shows. This looks way better than the last BMW 330i that I had uh, last month. Now, the one thing about this car, when they moved it to the SPA platform, they really stretched out the proportions and gave this thing a much more distinctive, aggressive look to it, a much more classy look to it. The car itself is about five inches longer than the previous generation. This is the longest vehicle in the compact luxury sports sedan segment at 187 inches long. Its wheelbase is also 113 inches long, so that's pre pretty much a little bit longer than what you're get, gonna get in most of the competition. This R design model that I'm showing you also has these $800 um, 19 inch wheels with the black finish. They're wrapped in 235 uh, 40 series tires. They also look fantastic. I really love how Volvo has kind of pushed the wheels out further into the corners to give this thing a much more sportier appearance. It actually looks a little bit more rear drive. Remember, Volvo does a front wheel drive architecture where most of them will be all wheel drive. As you can see, there's a panoramic sunroof that's included on this trim. It's not the full roof panoramic sunroof, but it does look pretty nice. I could have, I kind of wish Volvo had painted the rest of the roof black because it would have gone well with the black mirrors and of course the black accents on the wheels. Now stepping over to the rear of the vehicle, unlike most of the competition, remember the new three series kind of looks like a Lexus from certain angles. The Audi looks a little boring and all the Mercedes models look practically the same. The Volvo definitely has a very unique look to the LED taillights. As you can see, they kind of extend into the actual trunk lid. I like how they're spelling out Volvo across the back. I also like the integrated dual exhaust outlets, which look great. Remember, this one is the T6 powertrain, which we'll talk about in just a moment. Now, this one being a sedan, there's also a B60 wagon, which I'll have to show you at a later date. The trunk capacity of the S60 also is a little bit smaller than most of the competition. Volvo says you're only gonna get around 11.9 cubic feet of space, which is surprising because looking at the trunk here, it does look pretty massive. The seats themselves actually fold down in a 60-40 manner, which is nice. And then if you look underneath here, Volvo gives you these high visibility jackets, you know, cause they're all about safety. And you also have a temporary spare tire here so you don't have to deal with a fix a flat kit. So just like the exterior, the interior of the S60 is actually an even better place to look at and spend time because remember the Swedes, they do a really good job at just differentiating themselves. Now the first things first, get inside and shut the door. It has a really nice solid thunk, practically the same as that last BMW that I drove. Doesn't really surprise me here. Now, of course, here's the key fob that Volvo has been doing for a couple of years now. Love how it is literally wrapped in the same black leather that this interior is wrapped in. So if you guys have a car with a beige leather or red leather, or whatever, this key will actually change color. It just feels really solid, well-built. I will say that since keys are moving to the digital key where it's your phone, this is gonna become obsolete in a couple of years. So that's something that you need to keep in mind. I'll start the vehicle up. Volvo again does a little toggle here on the center console. And if you guys have been inside the latest crop of Volvo products, this is gonna look really familiar. In fact, all the luxury brands are practically just copying uh, what they're showing on their flagship model and then kind of just 
trickling it down the product lineup, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. This car looks way more expensive than its price tag would suggest. Now, if you guys uh, wanna see a more in-depth tour of the interior, I did already do a full video of this car when I was in California um, at the end of last year, so make sure you guys check that out. So I'll just briefly touch base on what I'm noticing here compared to the German competitors. Now, the first things first, it smells really different in here. It smells really expensive. That's the thing about Swedish cars, they kind of have that really nice, expensive smell to it. That's something that I just noticed. The rest of this interior, you can see there is actual stitching of leather on the upper part of the dash here with the contrast stitching that's on the seat. This is a soft touch area here. This art design does include this metal weave trim with some aluminum trim. It all looks very nice. The art design also has its own unique steering wheel, which the one thing that Volvo doesn't do is a powered tilt telescoping steering wheel. So I think that they actually need to start adding that because a lot of the competition does, but it offers this big adjustability of range. It's a fat steering wheel and it also includes paddle shifters. You guys want paddle shifters, you have to go for the R design model. The door panel materials here are also soft touch, which is nice. The Bowers and Wilkins sound system in this car. It's $3,200 and it sounds incredible. Definitely rivals what you're gonna get from Audi with the Bang & Olufsen, Mercedes with the Burmester. So it's worth the $3,000 price. It's just really crystal clear in terms of the clarity. The gauges, as you can see, you have a large 12 inch LCD over here, which actually became standard for the 2020 model year. And then you have the nine inch Census Connect infotainment system. Now this does include Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. And you can see Volvo was one of the first to do Apple CarPlay in this um, way, where you can actually still see the other menu options from the car system. And you can also put the Apple CarPlay here. The one thing I will say, when you have Waze up, for example, um, it does make it look smaller. You can't actually expand this to be the full screen versus if you guys do the factory GPS, you could actually expand it to take up the entire screen, which does look pretty good, but a lot of you are probably gonna use the embedded GPS or the GPS that's on your phone system anyway, since that's the one that constantly gets updates. The Census Connect isn't a topic of controversy because when this first came out, it was god awfully slow. Volvo has been updating the processor speed over the years. And I have to say this is noticeably much more snappy where it is still lagging is when you first turn this car on and you're trying to quickly navigate your music, turn on the climate control, this does take some time. So that's something you have to get used to. Now, when you put the vehicle into reverse, Volvo does one of the most impressive backup cameras in the business. It also has the ability to parallel park itself and it gives you a top-down 360 degree view. That is fantastic. It's practically rivaling that of what I've seen from BMW, from Mercedes, from Audi. So Volvo did an incredible job with this and it's really gonna impress a lot of you when you first get into this car. The instrument panel over here, I think Volvo needs to do something with the custom customization. You can obviously change the color of this. I have it in the dynamic setting where it's gonna show the red rings, but I would like to see them do something what Audi does with the virtual cockpit where you can completely customize the gauges. It's kind of a nitpick. I have the same nitpick with BMWs because their live cockpit professional really isn't all that professional. If, I'm, if you're asking me, it's a little bit more um, half because it's not quite as impressive as some of the competition. Now, over here you can see there's a lot of storage over here. There's two big cup holders. Your drive mode selector is this little toggle over here where you can basically change your individual dynamic whatnot. If you guys go for the T8, this leather shifter is replaced with an orifice crystal shifter, which again, you kind of expect that in the luxury segment. Uh, over here, it's a nice padded armrest. There is a pretty decent sized center console cubby. The one thing this car is missing, I don't see a wireless charger in this one. I I'm not sure if it's a dealer accessory, but for a car that's this tech focus, I think Volvo should have included a wireless charger. Above me, this panoramic sunroof offers plenty of light. It doesn't quite go the full length of the roof, which I wish it did. Uh, the seats you can see here, Volvo is really really known for their seat comfort. This one here has a little bit slightly more aggressive seats. Uh, they're also heated. If you guys are looking for ventilated seats and massaging seats, you have to go to the inscription trim and add a luxury package. I highly recommend that. I think Volvo needs to really include the cooled seats on the R design because that's a feature that a lot of people want. The glove compartment here, you can see it's damped, it's lined with felt. It's a pretty good size. So this interior, as you can see, if you're coming from a German car, is very different. It has a warmer, classier feel to it. And it also still has impressive tech. And if you're looking for massaging seats, this is one of the few cars in this segment to offer it. Now this is the smallest sedan in the Volvo portfolio. And when you get back here, honestly, the S60 offers a pretty good amount of space. Legroom, they said, is around 36 inches, which is practically the same as the last BMW 330i uh, that I last drove. There is a fairly large hump here that does take up space for the middle passenger, but as you can see, at five foot seven, I have very good headroom. I have decent legroom. In terms of features, they do offer heated back seats back here, your own set of climate controls. You have your own set of vents. This is optional, part of a $750 package. You can see here, folding this down, there's an actual 12 volt household power outlet, but no USB ports. So I'm surprised to see there's no USB ports. There is an armrest here that folds down. 
that gives you a little bit more storage in here. And then you have two cup holders that pop out. Now, uh, a couple things that I would like to see, there is no power sunshade available. Like there's no manual sunshade here, no power one for the back, but in terms of the other features, it's a nice soft touch material here. There's plenty of really high quality leather. The carpet even feels really high quality. So overall the back seat, I would say it's still one of the best in class. Just add some sunshades back here, Volvo. So underneath the S60's hood, the Swedes actually go a completely different direction versus the Germans in the engine department. As you can see, it starts off at, with the T5 de designation. It's a two liter turbocharged four cylinder with about 250 horsepower. That configuration is only available in front wheel drive. And as you can see, the Volvo's engine is mounted transversely as it's always been. Remember the Germans do a longitudinally mounted engine uh, versus what the Swedes are doing. Now this one here is the mid-level engine option. It's the T6, which doesn't mean it has a six cylinder. Instead, Instead, you have a two liter uh, four cylinder that's now supercharged. So it's turbocharged and it's supercharged, it's a twin charged engine, and it makes 316 horsepower and 295 foot pounds of torque. This engine compares very well to the base engines in the BMW 330i, the Mercedes Benz C300, and of course the Audi A4. Then, if you guys want even more power, Volvo does offer a T8 engine combination, which isn't a V8, but I guess what they're trying to go with the 8 is kind of like V8 like power because basically it takes the twin charged engine that you find here and it adds an electric motor system to produce. 400 horsepower in the T8 or 415 if you guys can find one of those Polestar engineered versions which Volvo only built 20 for 2018 or 2019 and they make almost 500 foot pounds of torque it's 475 or 498 in the uh, T8 model or the Polestar engineered version now that T8 model does offer electric electric only driving for up to 21 miles but of course that's all a different review now all the S60s are either front drive if you get the T5 or all-wheel drive like this T6 and you get only one transmission option it's an eight-speed automatic transmission developed by ASIN. So it's a really great transmission. Now as this one sits, it's pretty heavy. It weighs just under 4,000 pounds, which honestly is a little bit more than what you're gonna get for like a three series or a Mercedes-Benz C300. And fuel economy is also not bad. The T5 will get 2536. This one here will do 2132. Premium is required for this engine because remember it's twin charged. Now with that eight speed auto with 316 horsepower, you guys are probably all curious. Let's get this out on the road and see how it all performs. So it's been a while since I've driven the S60. It was about eight months ago when I drove this thing back in California. The first thing I wanna do is put it into its dynamic drive mode setting. Remember, this car is just a lot sportier to drive than the previous generation. Volvo really has done an incredible job with the platform of this car. You can feel it instantly when you get behind the wheel of the S60. It just feels really stiff. It feels really well put together. It feels a lot more sporty. And that's really where Volvo's going. I mean, again, if you want the luxury feel, you can also go for the inscription trim or the momentum trim, but this R design trim has a really great balance. Even with the suspension and the transmission in its dynamic mode right now, the car rides so well. I mean, I just had that BMW 330i last month, so it's still pretty fresh in my head. And this thing rides better than that BMW. The BMW had a very harsh ride to it with the sport package. This one also has the, um, the, the, you know, the R design sport package on it adaptive dampers and our design and our are in dynamic mode it just coddles you it has a really compliant ride it's super quiet in here the visibility also is really good you can see out of the front really good this pillar here is a little bit wider than i thought it would be but you have you know a good side mirror over here um, you have a good view out of the back volvo's full suite of driver assistance tech is mostly included only if you want the 360 camera and the um, adaptive cruise control you're gonna have to go for and the active bending lights you're gonna have to go for the technology package which will roll that in but I mean as a luxury car this thing is just incredible I mean out here on the highway this is where the s60 is going to spend most of its time you can basically turn on the pilot assist system which once you set the cruise control you see here the car will actually steer almost steer you completely in the lane. It almost didn't actually catch it there. Um, I will say that Volvo's pilot assist, I expected it to be a little further along than where it is. Volvo is very known for safety, for, for technology. And you know, it does a good job on gentle curves, but let's say I wanna change lanes here. It doesn't actually change lanes for me. I have to manually do the lane change, which is, you know, kind of a first world problem. Put your foot down here and the engine has so much torque, it's incredible. I mean, 200, almost 300 foot-pounds of torque, 316 horsepower, a turbocharged and supercharged engine. Now, granted, there is definitely lag with this engine. Uh, I mean, Volvo says that it's got its twin charge to try to mitigate that lag, but you notice the lag. Maybe it's the eight-speed auto, which is a good transmission, but <laughs> once it downshifts, 
holy crap, this thing is so fast. Volvo says it should get to 60 in around 5.5 seconds, uh, which matches that of the last you know, BMW 330i that I tested. I am a little surprised that it's not quicker, but the Volvo is heavier than a lot of the competition. C keep in mind, if you guys want more speed, the T8 does offer you up to 415 horsepower. I did drive that model when I was in Ojai, California last year, late last year, and I wasn't as impressed with the T8 as I wanted to be, uh, mostly because it, you know, it, especially the Polestar engineered version, it has, you know, the Polestar stuff like the Olin dampers, the upgraded brakes, but it didn't really have the engine noise, you know, to go with it. So as a sports sedan, Let's take this off ramp here. You can see the car has 245 width tires or 19s. The steering actually provides very good feedback. The chassis feels a little soft, or the suspension feels a little soft. I would prefer it a little bit more roll stiffness, but remember, this is supposed to be a luxury sedan. Wait for the Polestar version if you want something a little bit more stiff. I like the little burbles it makes. There's a slight burble when it shifts gears. Remember, this is just an eight-speed auto. But really, this car just gets me excited for a Polestar version. I mean, yes, the T6 you know, isn't going to be like M340i in terms of sportiness or Audi S4 in terms of sportiness, but it is a lot better than the 330i or a base A4 or just a base C300. Um, the T8 is supposed to be you know, that next level up. But I think Volvo has room in their engine lineup or in their lineup for you know, a real Polestar version with 500 horsepower. I don't know if Volvo is going to go with the, you know, a six cylinder engine with electrification. You know, electrification obviously is part of the Volvo package. Um, they do need to beef up the electric motor in the T8, or they need to give us a six cylinder twin turbo engine, which would be nice because the four cylinder as it sits right now, I'll put it into manual mode here, doesn't really make all that impressive noises if I'm being honest. I mean, it's, it's Volvo basically trying to do what they can with a four-cylinder. Um, but if you keep in mind, like BMW's four-cylinder doesn't all sound all that good. You know, the Audi A4 four-cylinder doesn't sound all that great. The Mercedes 3300 doesn't sound all that great. So this is very much in line with the norm. And keep in mind, this car is priced like its German competitors, but you do get more horsepower versus the Germans, which means you can easily pass them out on those open roads. I have to say, this car is way quicker than the previous generation models. And I really highly, highly recommend the T6. I drove a T5 um, a few months ago and I wasn't as impressed with the T5 as I am in the T6. It's fine in the smaller XC40, but in something like this, you want the T6 powertrain because of its refinement, its smoothness, um, how quick it is. And it doesn't even get that worse a gas mileage compared to uh, just the single, the, the turbocharged T5 engine only. So the S60 itself is an incredibly enticing car. Even if you took away the pedigree that the Volvo badge offers it, there are plenty of reasons why you'd wanna choose this car over its more established German competitors. But for the purpose of this video, I'm gonna give you my three reasons why you should choose this Volvo S60 over its German competitors. And the first thing's first, it's more comfortable, it's more luxurious, and it's more unique. By comfort, I'm talking about the ride quality and those incredible seats. By luxuriousness, I'm talking about the interior, the materials they've chosen, the overall ambiance, the smell of that leather, it's just all super nice. And then of course, by uniqueness, I'm talking about the design. All the German competitors have just gotten really stale. They're all starting to look like each other or they're starting to look like Japanese cars whereas this thing really stands out everywhere I took the S60 it turned a lot of heads and I think that's one of the reasons or the one of the big reasons why a lot of buyers are going to quickly choose the S60 over a lot of the German rivals but with all that said it's time to give the Volvo S60 an RPM rating starting with the R for real world usage I'm going to give the Volvo a 6 out of 10 points simply because it's just a four-door sedan with a decent sized backseat a little bit of a smaller trunk so I actually had to give it the same score as the BMW 330i that I had last month. Now moving on to the E for efficiency, I had to give the Volvo a little bit of a lower score because it's not quite as fuel efficient as the best is what you get from BMW, for example. At 2132 mpg, I gave this a 5 out of 10 points simply because, again, it is a few mpg less. In my week's worth of testing, I got about 24 mpg uh, in mixed driving, mostly city driving combined, which isn't great. It's good, but it's not great, and you're also required to use premium gas. Now moving on to the D for desirability, I'm going to give this car a 7 out of 10 points, and it's a lot higher than what I gave the BMW 330i simply because the design is so unique the interior is nice you don't see too many volvos out in the road which is why i'm going to give this a 7 out of 10 points 
Moving on to the L for longevity. This is where I had to ding the Volvo in general because the brand hasn't been doing super well for reliability and long-term build quality. Remember when this car first came out or when the XC90 came out, so many issues with the infotainment system. So I'm gonna give this a five out of 10 points, which is actually a little lower than the BMW 330i, ouch. Moving on to the I for innovation. This is where I'm gonna give a few points back to the S60 simply because the car as a whole has a lot of innovative features. First of all, the design stands out. The interior is laid out incredibly well. The infotainment system is fantastic. The powertrains are also unique. I mean, you've got three versions of a, a four cylinder engine that goes from turbocharged to twin charge to twin charge plus electrification with plug-in hybrid and 21 miles of range. Honestly, this is very impressive. So I'm gonna give this car an eight out of 10 points for innovation. Now moving on to the end for need for speed. I'll give this car a seven out of 10 points simply because the T6 is probably all the motor that you're gonna need. Volvo says zero to 60 in around 5.8 seconds. The T8 model will do zero to 60 in around 4.3 seconds, which is honestly super quick. This is, pr this is definitely gonna keep up with the best from BMW, from Mercedes, from Audi. So I'll give this a seven out of 10 points. And then last but not least, expense. I'm gonna give the Volvo again a seven out of 10 points because even though this car is expensive, it's a luxury car, it starts at around 35,700, which is actually a little bit less than most of the competition. This particular one here being the T6 with all-wheel drive and the R design model starts at around $47,000. It's practically a fully loaded T6 and this one's around $55,500, which is about $5,000 less expensive than the last BMW 330i that I tested. So great value. So I'll give this a seven out of 10 points. Add it all up and you're looking at 45 out of 70 points, which is actually four points higher than that BMW 330i that I had back in June. So again, Volvo has built an incredible car. But with all that said, I hope you guys have enjoyed my full overview on this 2019 Volvo S60. If you're also looking to see the latest cars I'm testing, be sure to follow me on Instagram at redline underscore reviews, like us on Facebook. And as always guys, please keep subscribing to the Redline Reviews YouTube channel for all the latest reviews. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you all in the next video.